Okay, that's basically what I want to be able to cover the concept of monetary policy. Okay, and understand how it is done. Okay, we will learn the types of monetary policy, the tools available to the commercial um, central bank for conducting the monetary policy, and how the effective or how effective monetary policies are in analyzing the money supply or money market. Okay, so that's basically what we are going to do today. So we are going to see that if we should take this in objective form, this is our main objective for today, which I just said not long ago. Okay, so in a form of key topics, um, this will be our key topic today. So we are going to go through um, meaning of monetary policy. We'll go through the tools for monetary control. And the last one is we are going to go through the money market equilibrium. Okay. So let's step, let's start. Okay. So you have this reading list, Monkey and Taylor, page 338 to three, four, five. You can see what we are coming to do today here. There, okay. Putting that aside, we will be needing this, but we'll need it when we are doing the tutorial session. Okay. So when we click on this, it will take us straight to um, the Bank of Ghana website, where we would be able to, to see the monetary policy um, committee, their statement. Okay, so now let's set the ball rolling. I'll teach you guys how to download all these things, so don't worry. Okay, don't worry. It's nothing difficult. So we said that we have two basic, basically we have two main policies in macroeconomics and this is one of it okay the monetary policy is one of it so basically when we say monetary policy all that we are trying to say is that it refers to changes in um, money supply that influences the level of economic activity but before that let me see if this will confuse someone what is fiscal policy? I just want to check if you guys are learning. What is fiscal policy? Two participants. All right, so I think I have two people who wants to. Yes, then. Yasin, please, can you hear me? If Yasin is not there, I think Johnson. Um, so fiscal policy is a government policy which aims at um, controlling uh, taxes and, uh, I mean, government expenditure uh, to um, control economic activities. Yeah. All right. I think Jessica, thank you very much, Johnson. Jessica, you wanted to say something, or oh, he has said your point. Yeah, something like that. Oh, Jessica, so if I ask you to say exactly what he said, would you say the same thing? Okay, I was going to see is the use of government spending in fact to affect the economic activity. All right, so basically, that is the whole idea about fiscal policy. Okay, and we said we had two types of fiscal policy. The same thing happens when we are talking about monetary policy. Okay, so we also have monetary policy to be the changes in money supply. Okay, so today we are going to basically learn when government would want to increase money supply and when government would want to decrease money supply. Okay, and the effect on the economy. So, at what particular point should government decide to change or increase or decrease money supply in the system?
system. Okay, so that's the definition you would want to know or learn. Now, putting that aside, the next thing we are going to talk about is um, who does this monetary policy stuff? Okay, so monetary policy is basically conducted by the central bank. Last week, we learned that the central bank is the only bank that is mandated to what, print out notes or money. But the uh, commercial bank actually doesn't really print money, but it is able to generate money through what, the fractional system. Okay, so putting this aside, now we know monetary policy is conducted by the central bank. Okay, it's basically a set of committee enacted by law to control our money system in the economy. Okay, so as we said for fiscal policy, we have two types. Monetary policy, also we have two types. Okay, so we have the expansionary and what the contractionary. Now, again, when we say expansionary fiscal policy, please listen to the question, expansionary fiscal policy. What do you mean by that? Before I even explain the so please, your line is breaking. Can hear you. I believe today my net. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah, but it breaks along the line, so we can't hear what you're saying. Oh, dear God. Yes, please. Okay, so I was asking what expansionary fiscal policy is. Okay, so. All right, Yasin. It's referred to. It refers to increases in government spending or reduction in taxes. Okay. All right. So that's that's basically what expansionary fiscal policy is. Okay. Now the same thing happens in monetary policy. Okay. So when we say expansionary monetary policy, all that we are trying to say is that government tries to what, increase money supply in the economy. Okay, so when government decides to do that, then we are saying that um, the committee has either reduced the policy rate. Okay, so if it is contractionary fiscal policy, it basically means that government is trying to reduce money supply in the system. Okay, so if government is doing that, then it means it is actually increasing what the policy rate. Okay, so that's the two distinction between um, fiscal um, expansionary monetary policy and contractionary monetary policy. Note, expansionary can also be known as loosening. Okay, so maybe in exams, you'll be asked to differentiate between um, loosening monetary policy and tightening monetary policy, you should be able to what, do the same thing for us. Okay, the next thing we are going to cast our mind on is how to control this money supply. Okay, so basically we said that this is done by the central bank. Okay. So we said that this is basically done by the central bank. Okay, so it's really easy. Okay, so indirectly, money is also controlled by the commercial banks through the deposit creation process. Okay, so now we are going to pay much attention on the central bank bit. Okay, so the central bank control the money supply through the conduct of monetary policy. And it can either be whether the expansionary or what the contractionary monetary policy. Okay, 
And you know, the central bank is an autonomous um, government institution. So basically, they don't really go through the stress of government influencing most of their activities. Okay. So they've laid down some particular measures that they think could reduce or increase money supply or control money in the economy. And these are the tools for basically monetary control used by the central bank. Okay, so you've heard this before. Okay, we have just this basic three tools. The first one is um, open market operation. How, if there is, uh, we want to increase money supply, what we need to do? And if we want to decrease money supply, what we need to do? Okay, so we have reserve requirements policy. And last week, I remember we said something small about reserve requirement policy. Okay, and basically, we also established that they are required by law. Banks are required by law to keep certain fraction of deposits received. Okay, so they can't make loans out of them. And the last one is called the discount rate policy. Okay, so we are going to take these ones one by one and deal with them. Now, when we say open market operation, what do we mean by open market operation? We are basically saying that it refers to the purchase or sale of government securities in the open market. Okay, so now, before I even proceed, I know I've said something about government securities when we're dealing with um, the financial market. So what is government securities or government instruments? This thing. Okay, Johnson. What is government securities? So when we talk about government securities, uh, they are by which the government uh, tries to get money from the citizens uh, through the issue of bonds or uh, treasury bills. So All right, it. thank you very much. Okay. So that's basically the meaning of government securities. Okay, so if government wants to borrow from us, okay, he would sell us treasury bills or treasury bonds, which has a maturity date. And if government also wants to basically give us money, he will pay us back. Okay, so that's how the open market operation works. So when we say government selling a security, basically, especially if it is, um, okay, so someone said I'm going too fast. I'm sorry, okay. All right, so when we say open market operations, what we are trying to say is it refers to the purchase or sale of government securities in the open market. Okay, so I asked for the definition for government securities and Johnson said that when we say government securities, it's basically government selling to us either treasury bonds or let's say bonds. Okay, so when we say treasury bills, it's one way of government borrowing from us in the system. Okay, so if government wants to borrow from us, which is usually known as domestic borrowing, okay, he will sell us treasury bills, then we will pay. Okay, treasury bills is just those who have purchased some before, you will notice that it's just a sheet, okay, which it looks like a promissory note, which gives us maybe um, a particular rate that we would get us returns when the maturity date is due. Okay, so that's basically how your treasury bill works. So in the open market, we are going to have some dealers. Okay, so when we say dealers, they are the licensed institutions that are allowed to sell bonds and others. Okay, and we have government securities, okay, such as maybe basically they also have the power to also sell to the citizens those bonds or the treasury bills. Okay, so these are the two main operators in the system. Yeah. We have the individual, yes, please. 
is it necessary for people to buy the treasury bonds? Come again. Is it necessary for the people to buy the treasury bonds? Like, I don't really get how yes. the government is going to sell it. If it's okay, so it. basically, it comes with an interest rate, okay? The reason for it being necessary is that it comes with an interest rate. And everyone would want appreciation of his capital. Okay, so if let's say currently the treasury bill has, it depends. Okay, we have um, 91 days treasury bill, 182 days. We have one year treasury bond, two years, three years. Okay, so each of them has a particular interest rate that it attracts. Okay, so let's say if I buy three months, which is 91 days treasury bill and maybe it has an interest rate of, let's say 7%, you would want to purchase because your money is going to appreciate by what, 7%. Okay, so that is why it is really necessary for you to buy. In one way or the other, we will understand very soon how governments will use that to reduce money supply. Okay, so if you should ask whether if it is necessary for people to purchase that, then that is the reason. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. So now, when we say, say okay, one last thing, okay. sorry. So, like, if That's the people fine. buy the treasury bonds, then that means they're not going to purchase like stuff. So there's no like velocity of money in the system or something. Hello. Oh, these are basically investing. These are basically individual investment. You know, for investment that's like, let's say, if I have treasury bills, I have bonds, I have commercial papers. Please, can you hear me? Or oh, my line is still breaking. It, it broke a little at the beginning, but I can hear you now. It's fine. You know, it's fine now. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. So, buying a treasury bill doesn't limit you to say that you can buy extra um securities okay you can buy as many as you can and for you the individual that we can categorize as what a portfolio for you okay so you can have commercial paper you can have repurchase agreements treasury bill bonds stocks all these things in your possession as an investor okay so whether you buy that it's like you invest in so it doesn't really restrict you from buying other ones do you get it? Yeah, but I want to understand how that's supposed to. Like, you want to understand how that's what? That one is supposed to like lead to people um, not buying, like with the reduction in the money supply. That's what oh, okay. Talking. So we've not gotten there. You know, we are going to. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Okay, so, good. Now, we said that we are also going to establish that open market purchases, okay, increases money supply, okay, and open market sales decreases money supply. Okay, now let's take them one by one. So, let's assume, okay, we are going to see how Almost affect the money supply. Okay, so we are going to consider an open market purchase of government security worth 100 million. Okay, so when we say open market purchase, all that we are trying to say is open market purchase usually what increases money supply in the system. Okay, so this is how it works. Now, governments will come to you. If government wants to reduce money in the system. Let me give you a preamble before we take the example in the slides. If government wants to come and sell the paper open market sale, okay, so the treasury bill, so governments will announce that they are selling treasury bill at this particular interest rate 
So interested persons should come and buy it. So if you go and you want to buy some, now they'll give you just a sheet. Okay, so to you, you are buying it from government. Okay, and to the government, he's selling to you. But note, we are not considering your part, but rather we are considering the government part. So now government will give you that sheet and tell you that maybe in the next 91 days, okay, you can come for your money plus the interest. So that will be an open market sales. Now let's see how the purchases work, works, okay? Open market purchases is when you have the sheet and now government decides to now come and buy from you and give you your interest in addition. Okay, remember when you were buying it from the government, that was a sale. So government was selling to you. So he gave you the sheet. He was once having the sheet and he gave you that sheet. That shows that you have bought something from him. Now, if government wants to get that sheet back, government now needs to what? Buy from you plus the interest. Please do we get it? Sir, yes. please can you come again? Okay, so, so let's take it one by one. Let's take the sales. Now, open market sales is when let's say I got, I'm the government and you are the citizens. Now, I want to reduce money supply in the system. Remember, we are saying that this will reduce money in the supply in the system because money's with the central bank, it's not added towards the money supply. If you could remember when we were doing money, money is left with the supply and the central bank and not with the public, it's not added to the money um, supply. Okay, so if government wants to reduce money in the system, this is what he does. He's going to give you a sheet, then you will buy from him. Okay, and that sheet is what we call the treasury bill. You will buy that from him. But remember, because you are buying, he's the one selling. That is why we call it open market sales. So government is the one selling to you. Now you will buy from him. Now you would have the sheet. Okay, so let's assume that transaction is settled. And government tells you on the sheet, you see that maybe 91 days, you can now come for your money. Okay, 91 days time, you can now come for your money. When you are coming, now, government is now coming to buy from you because you are the one having the sheet now. And that we call it open market purchase. Okay, so now government is the one buying or purchasing from you because you now have the sheet with you. Please, do we get it? Yes, sir. Good. So that is the whole idea about. So you see, now at first he took the money from you and that money will be with the central bank. So we won't add that money to the money supply in the system. Okay, now when you are going to get your money back, he is now buying from you. So he is giving you your money plus the interest they promised you, which is going to give you more money. So as everyone is going in for his or her money, money supply in the system will just increase because now it will be money with the public. So we can now add it to what the money supply Please, do you get the whole analogy? Yes, sir. Yes, please. Okay. Okay, so if that is the case, so we can now talk about um, considering an open market purchase of government security worth 100 million. Okay, that is the one in the slide. So we are saying that when the central bank buys the security, it issues the initial, it issues the initial a check worth 100 million, which can be drawn as cash or deposited into an account with a commercial bank. Okay, note that either of these actions will increase what money supply because we are giving back you your money. So maybe you can leave your account there that, okay, so when the time is due, pay my amount into this bank. Okay, so remember, we have Ghana Stock Exchange. That is where both government securities are bought and sold. Okay, so when you go there, they can give you back your money in cash. They can also decide to deposit that in 
a bank account for you. Okay, so this is going to increase money supply in what? The system. Now, when there is an open market sales, it will take the opposite where I already explained. You are now paying government, like you are buying from the government. So he's taking your money and money is left with what the central bank is not added to the money supply. So it will reduce money supply in the system. Please, do we get it? Yes, sir. Yes, please. Good. So, you know, in Ghana, the Bank of Ghana's Monetary Policy Committee announces the direction of monetary policy after its regular meetings. So they, they meet and decide whether we should increase the policy rate or decrease the policy rate. Okay. And anytime they do that, we would see that in the link we provided here. Okay, so when there is a change in the policy rate, when we want to read about it, this is where we will see it. Okay, this is where we will see it. So when you come here, you will see policy rates for 2015, 2017, 2018, like that. Uh, okay, so that is how it works. Now, in Ghana, we call it uh, monetary policy committee. When you move to the US, they call it the federal funds. Okay, so we have um, so many names we can give to. So depending on how the examiner would want to confuse you, he could use the federal fund rate, which is the same as what in Ghana, we would have called it what monetary policy rate. Okay, so consider, depending on how the examiner would want to confuse you in the exams. When you see the federal rate, okay, basically it means like we are in the US and he's, instead of calling it monetary policy rate, he's calling it what? Federal rate. When you are in the UK, they will call it bank rate. Okay, so we should just take note of these basic um, terms that we are using here. All right, so the next one we are going to consider is what we call the required reserve, required or reserved required ratio. Okay, now, this is very simple. Last week we spoke of this. We are saying that if you put your money in the bank or if you make any deposit, the commercial bank or any bank is required by law to keep a fraction of your deposit. Okay. So if let's and last week when we we're doing the fractional method, when we we're doing the fractional method, we noticed that if um, someone, I think the required reserve was 10%. So if you make a deposit of 100 cities, we are supposed to keep what? Um, 10 cities and give 90 cities out as a loan. So meaning that the required reserve, we can't what? Make loans out of it. Okay. So even going through the slides, the whole idea is then he would increase the required reserve. Okay, now we can do this quantitatively. So let's try this. Let's try using some small figures to understand this. Okay, so let's assume, okay, remember last week we noticed that if we want to know um, let's assume you go, you, you deposit to deposit it. Okay, and we are required by law to keep 10% of this, meaning we can give out 90 cities and keep 10 cities. So at the end of the day, we'll get 100 cities. Let's assume if government decides to increase this 10 to 20%, okay, what would happen in the system? Meaning that the 100 cities you deposited, okay, now we are keeping 20% of it. Meaning that we can now give out what 80 cities as what loans and keep what 20 cities. Meaning, you see, this one could give out more loans. But looking at this, you could see that the loans have now what, decreased because it's the required reserve has been what increased. We can decide to increase this to 50%, meaning it's 50-50. We can just give out 50 and also keep 50. And this 50 here, you can't make loans out of it. It's usually with what the central bank. 
and we are keeping this required reserve for future uncertainties. Okay, sometimes you'll be there, then the bank would need more money. Okay, so we would say the bank now becomes illiquid. When the bank is illiquid, meaning they are running into what liquidation. Okay, bankruptcy is basically catching them up. So if a bank is suffering like that, we would fall on their reserves with the central bank to revive the bank. Okay, so if government decides to increase the policy rates at the required reserve ratio, then it means we are decreasing money in the system. Okay, and if government decides to decrease it, we are what, increasing money in the system. So we should just get this difference. And that's all about required reserve ratio. Please do we get it? Yes, sir. Okay. Any question? Or oh, I didn't hear the person well. All right, so now there was a third one in this slice, it was not defined, okay? Or let me say, um, yes, I don't think it's in this slice, yes. So then the third one was discount rate policy. When we say discount rate policy, is the rate at which the commercial bank borrows from the central bank, which is the Bank of Ghana. Remember, commercial bank is a government institution. Okay, so the commercial bank usually have this, um, or it has its way of what, borrowing from the central bank. So it also works like the um, required reserve ratio. Okay, so uh, let's see. Now, if commercial bank decides to go to the central bank at, you know, because they are both government, government, doesn't mean they don't pay interest. They do. Okay, they pay interest. Just that at this time, because it's a governmental institution, they take the loan at a reduced interest rate. Okay, so you know, if, if you are going in for monies that you don't pay anything on, you don't really, really value them. Okay, you don't put them into good use. So they are paying the interest just to tell them that they have a responsibility. Okay, so that's why they are being charged interest. So let's say the commercial bank, okay, the commercial bank needs um, let's say 2 billion Ghana or 20 billion Ghana cities from the central bank at a rate of, you know, because they are governmental institutions, let's say at a rate of 1%. Okay, meaning um, the commercial bank is going to pay, let's say, 20 billion and some small amount. Okay, so if you find 1% of this, you notice that they are paying something less. Now, if government, because if they are paying something less and they are getting 20 billion, they will be equally going for that. And out of this 20 billion, commercial bank will be able to give out more loans to their citizens. Okay, so the more they, they are getting more loans, the more or the higher the money supply. Okay, the, the more they are getting more loans, the higher the money supply. Now, the central bank or government can decide to increase this interest rate to let's say, uh, 10%, okay, to deter commercial bank from what? Borrowing from the central bank. Okay, so let's say if they increase this interest rate to 10%, even if commercial bank would want to borrow, they would want to borrow something less because as the, this money is increasing, okay, this interest will be increasing. So even if they want to borrow at this rate, they would want to borrow something small, but we are taking it from the perspective where it is deterring these people from borrowing from the central bank. Okay, so if they are not borrowing, then it means we are try, they, are, they can't make more loans to the citizens, hence reducing what the money supply in the system. Please do we get it? Yes, sir. Yes, so please, this is the whole idea about how government tries to reduce money supply in the system and also what 
increased money supply in the system. Now, remember, so now we are done with our two main key topics, which is um, you trying to go through the definitions and also trying to understand what the tools used for um, controlling money supply. The next one is to talk about the equilibrium position. And you know, we can't talk about equilibrium without talking about what. So you see, we've named it topic three. So we are done with the first two. We can't talk about equilibrium without talking about demand and supply. Okay. We remember in microeconomics, in basic and our basic economics, we said that the market will be in equilibrium when the demand equals what the supply. Okay, so now let's talk about demand. Okay, demand for money. Last week we spoke about demand for money. And I think we said something small about supply for money. And basically this course, the monetary policy gives us better understanding of the supply side of the money. Okay, so we noticed that we said the real um, demand for money, okay, or real demand for money is the nominal money in terms of how much goods and services it can buy, okay? And we also established last week that money, okay, or demand for money are real interest rates, level of income and expected inflation. So if I ask you to provide the real money, uh, real interest rate formula, you should be able to tell me, okay? Real interest rate formula, you should be able to what, tell me. And we said that the real interest rate formula was what? R equals to what? I minus what? This. Please do you remember this formula. Yeah. Good. So where this R is what? Real demand for money. And this is our nominal money. And this is the inflation. Okay. Now, last week, not long ago, we said that, you know, money demand has a negative relationship, okay? Or quantity of money demand has a negative relationship with what? The interest rate. So anytime... Okay, last week we established that, um, I guess that was where I was logged out. So I, I managed to give the real interest rate formula and I think someone said, yes. Yeah. So I think it was here that I was logged out. Okay, so all that we are trying to say here is quantity of money demanded has a negative relationship with what? Interest rate. Okay, so when interest rate rises, Okay, when interest rates rises, it forces us to save. Why are we saying that? Let's assume I have thousands of this and interest rates now in the market is 30%. 30, 30 meaning if I should save my thousands of this today, I'm going to get an interest rate of what? 
30 on that thousand, which is basically like 300 cities at the end of the year. Okay. Now, so when interest rate decreases, then it forces us to what? Also increase our money demand. Okay. So we wouldn't want to, if it increases, we wouldn't want to hold much money. Okay. So we would want to save more. And if it decreases, we would want to rather hold and hold our monies. Okay. That's the whole idea about what? Um, the demand side of money demanded or quantity demanded. Now let's yeah, look please at come again with the statement that when interest rate increases. Okay, so when interest rate increases, okay, our demand for money falls. Okay, and when interest rate decreases, our demand for money rises. Are we cool? Yes. Okay, so that is why the quantity demand for money has a negative or it, it slopes downwards, okay? That is why it slopes downwards. That is the whole idea because of the relationship with what's interest rate. Are we cool? Hello. No. Yes, please. So please, will it be like interest rate against demand for goods? No, demand for money, no goods. Oh, okay. Demand for money. Okay, thank okay. you. Sure. So we are going to learn how to plot this on a graph. Okay, so don't worry. Very soon you understand. Now with the supply side, okay. Remember we said that money supply is basically done by the central bank. Okay, so this, is, this does not really depend on any other factor. It is basically like when... Um, the Bank of Ghana decides to pump money, okay? Or let's say there is an issue in the economy, issue like inflation, and Bank of Ghana decides to either increase the policy rate to reduce inflation in the system. This does not depend on interest rate, okay? Bank of Ghana does this to solve an issue. So with that in mind, we are saying that the supply of money has what a, a vertical line okay when you say a vertical line it, does, it means it does not slope downwards or upwards but it's just a vertical line okay because it's not it does not depend on what um the interest rate if it had been a function of the interest rate then we would have what either curved it or show anything any other stuff okay so this means the money supply curve is independent of what real interest rate because the bank of ghana does not need approval from anyone to solve its own issues okay so it does not really depend on um the factors of in in interest rate in the market okay so this is basically how the equilibrium shows okay so when we say equilibrium in the market. This is what we are trying to say. Let's try and draw, draw this graph manually. Okay, let's try and draw this graph manually. Okay, so this is what I, I was trying to say. So if you take this like this, we said that demand has a downward slope. Okay, so that is why we could see something like this. It has a downward slope. So we can say MD, money demand. Okay, remember this is dependent on what? The interest rate. This is dependent on what? The interest rate. So you could see that as interest rate is increasing, remember, as this is the interest rate. Okay, so as this is increasing, you will notice that our money demand will be what? Decreasing. And as this decreases, you see that you will be demanding more money. Okay, we want to hold more money. Now, the supply we said does not depend on what? The interest rate, that's why it's like this. So we say this is M over P. Okay. We are saying that that is what M over P. So I will explain the M over P. This is what M star. This is also MD. So where the demand intersects with the supply, that is where we have the equilibrium. Okay. So we we'll call this. Our star. Okay, so this is if it's, the question is about uh, 
money supply this is this will be the initial equilibrium stage okay so i can indic indicate here as e naught okay so this will be what our initial equilibrium stage and also bring some knots here okay this will be our initial equilibrium um stage so all that we are trying to put across here is so we will be in equilibrium when the money supply equals the money demand that is all about the equilibrium position okay so let's try and understand some terms here the m over p is basically the nominal money all over the price level nominal money over price level the r is the interest rate then this is the money balance so at equilibrium we will get this actual money balance then this is what our money demand okay so all right so someone is asking can you show how increase in rates will increase money supply using the graph sure that's what we are basically building up to okay i don't want to um skip anything we are running it small small so this is our initial equilibrium stage so if i should ask you a question of which we are going to do one here this would be our initial equilibrium which is this what is here is just what i've done here so we'll be in equilibrium when our demand money our supply curve is always vertical in money supply our supply curve is always vertical it's not like the usual supply curve which had a positive line okay where it is i can just proceed with what the person just asked okay so this is basically what you can see in the blue um line so now let's see how we could use this to solve an issue in the economy let's basically understand how this work this work in so many ways how does monetary policy works okay so we are saying that a change in money supply shift the monetary policy the money supply okay this will change the real interest rate now let's take something so this if there is a shift it is going to remember on the graph we only had interest rates and what money um balances okay so interest rates against money balances that's what is here on this graph so if there is a decrease you see that interest rates would increase and if there is an increase you see that interest rate in hold is going to decrease especially when there is an increase in money supply that's basically what we are going to see so that's what we done here okay so when there is a change in money supply shift the money supply curve in the market so the changes is what we are going to learn very soon okay it's either going to be whether increasing the interest rate or decreasing the interest rate okay and we are saying that a change in the real interest rate affects consumption and investment. So we are going to understand either increase or decrease aggregate demand and also affect our general price level. So let's see the question we have here. So usually in the exams, this is what you will see. The examiner will go and download the monetary policy rate, uh, the monetary policy committee, their report. Okay. Then we would add it to your exams question. Okay. So you have to go and read and know whether we are increasing this to 20, um, we are increasing or decreasing this. So looking at this, we had an issue. In 2015, the issue was for them to reduce inflation. Okay, the issue was for them to reduce inflation, meaning when there is an inflation in the system, meaning there is too much money in the system. Okay, so if we want to reduce inflation, then we have to what, increase the monetary policy rate. And already I explained that if the monetary policy rate is increased, it means we are decreasing what money supply. 
Okay, so that is what we've done here. How does this tightening, remember, moving from 25%, 26% is what we are calling the tightening. Moving from this, how does this tightening of monetary policy stands help or stands to help fight inflation? Okay, so that's what we are going to look at. Okay, that's what we are going to what? look at. Now, before we can even go on the slide, we can just try and do this manually so that you appreciate, okay? You appreciate how it is done. I believe, please, can you see when I write here? Can you see something here? Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, we can see. Okay, so now let's see how this is going to reduce money supply in the system. Remember our initial stage, all the time, if you have a question like this, make sure your initial equilibrium works here. So at this level, we will say R naught, okay? Then we would be, this is um, the real money balance. This would be our initial equilibrium, okay? And I remember I just said, so this is uh, MD, this is uh, M over P which is nominal money over the price level, money demand, and this is the money balances. Okay, so this is our origin. Now we are saying that how does this, how does this, okay, how does this tightening? Why is it tightening? Tightening because we are moving from 25 to what? 26%, meaning they are increasing what? The policy rate, hence reducing money supply in the system. Okay, how does this happen? And we said that this, remember this, if this is our initial money supply, if I want to reduce it, I can bring it here, meaning it to be here. Okay, so we are going to have M star star. Okay, remember this is M star, this will be M star star. Now we'll get a new interest rate, which is what? R1. So you can see that interest rate has increased here, right? And our money demand has decreased. Remember we said when interest rate increases, our money demand also what decreases because we wouldn't want to hold much money. But rather we would want to save and make more money on the money we already had. Okay, now how does this actually, the decrease in money supply, which is now, M1 over, yeah, uh, fight inflation. This is what we are doing. Remember, with the aggregate demand, we said that, remember, let's assume we have. So let's assume this. Now, I don't want to deal with this part because I'm taking the individual, okay? Businesses can also be individuals. Remember, businesses are not governments. Okay, so remember when interest rate increases, people would want to hold their consumption. Okay, people would want to hold their consumption and save more. Hence, consumption is going to what? Decrease. Okay, consumption is going to decrease. Remember, the investment here, we are not talking about you going into the bank to... Um, buy treasury bill or something. Okay, this is residential investment, business fixed investment and what inventory. Okay, so people would want to what? Now there's an opportunity. If businesses also save, they are going to make huge sums of money as sort interest. So it is going to deter them from what? Investing more, but rather they would want to what? Put this money they would have used in investment into what? Something in the bank that would also give them higher interest, okay? So at the end of the day, whilst consumption is decreasing and investment is also decreasing, our aggregate demand will decrease, okay? And if demand is decreasing, you should know that
Aqui. Please, could you come again? The normal market, if prices, if demand decreases, okay, you should know that prices are supposed to fall to restore equilibrium. And it's going to what? Affect our consumption, our consumption, it will affect our investment and hence decreases, because if this is decreasing this way, is it how it is decreasing this or? Please, the one who asked the question, is it how it decreases all the graph? Hello. Then no, your line was breaking, so we didn't get that part. Hello. The one who asked the question, I was asking, is it the graph you want me to go over? or how it is decreasing the aggregate demand. How it is. Did you get it? Hello. Hello, sir. Yes, please, can you hear me now? Yes, please, I can hear you. So, okay, how so it is, is, it, is it a graph you want me to go over or everything? Uh, suggest the graph, please. Okay, so uh, this is the graph I drew. Okay, remember, I established or oh, in the slide we are saying that the government wanted to combat what inflation, so they increased the policy rate from twenty five to twenty six percent. Now, I we also established that when this is increased, it means what monetary tightening. Okay, now we are saying that how does this tightening fight inflation. Okay, so I told you that in exams, okay, in exams, if you see a question like this, the equilibrium, all the time, the story must start from here, okay. This is my network, okay. Yes, it is okay now. Yeah, right now, it's okay. Okay, all right, thank you. Now, remember this is our interest rate. And I told you in a exam, the you first start from what your Initial anything about this because I think I explained it earlier. This is what tightening and tightening apply. And this is the money supply curve. So if it is decreasing, it means it will come back, right? So we can say that we would have our money supply curve what's here. This would be M star star. This is M star. That's why I'm doing M star star. Someone can also do M1, M2. Okay. This one, someone can also do R1. Then the new one that is being created here will be what? R2. Okay, so you can see that when money supply decreases, interest rate what increases. Do you know why? If interest rate increases, it will force people to save, hence reducing the money in the system. Okay, so money in the system is now what also decreasing. Do you get it? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. That's basically the whole idea. So we are saying that how does this affect or fight inflation? This can only fight inflation. And I try doing this. AD is equals to C plus what? I. Let's forget about government. And remember, we are assuming that if interest rate is increasing, we said it has a negative relationship with what? money demand. So we would want to what? hold less money, meaning we would want to hold our consumption today and save more. Hence, consumption would decrease. Okay. Businesses are also not going to take their usual investment activities. Okay. Because interest rate has now gone up. So businesses would want to convert all their cash to buy something that has a higher interest rate. So businesses' investment also what? decrease. 
And if these two are decreasing, meaning aggregate demand will also hold, decrease. And remember, if demand is decreasing, it will force the price level to also hold, decrease. Because I tried even explaining this with a normal demand and supply we know. Okay, if demand decreases, okay, meaning there will be a surplus in the market, hence prices needs to fall. Okay, that's the whole idea. So if prices are falling, it will help us keep this inflation. And that is the whole idea about the money supply. Please, do we get it? Yes, sir. I can hear only one person saying yes, sir. That's not convincing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm here for... I'm here for if you don't understand, let me know. I'll go over a thousand times. Even I'm fine. Okay. Now, which if if this was decreased from twenty five to twenty four, we should know that this is going to what increase. Our, so you let first. Let me first let you know that we are done with the lecture slides. Okay. So. How does this tightening affect our money supply? So this is a contractionary or tightening. How does this tightening affect or um, fight inflation? You know, a decrease in money supply increases the real interest rate. And that's what I, shown, I showed um, on the graph, okay? Higher real interest rates reduces investment and consumption demand. Okay, so in the ADAS, remember aggregate demand, aggregate supply framework, AD falls and price level also at four, which helps slow down the pace of what inflation. Remember, inflation is when we said there is a persistent rise in what prices of goods and what services. So if prices are falling, meaning we are controlling what inflation, and that is the whole idea about that. Okay, so that's what we just shown here. There was a decrease in money supply, which shifted the line here. So we would have R star star, okay, or R2, where here was our initial equilibrium. So if this decreases, this interest rate will increase, money balance will also decrease, hence trying to reduce what inflation in the market. Now let's take the opposite of this. Let's assume the policy rate, okay, was because in exams, you know, you would have one of it. So we shouldn't do just one side and leave the other side. It doesn't help. So it was 25% what 26, right? So let's assume this one is 25% to 24%. What would have happened in the market? Now let's see. You will notice that, of course, that means we are not um, trying to solve the issue of inflation. Okay, we are not trying to solve the issue of inflation here. Okay, remember I've reduced the policy rate and if it is reduced, it doesn't solve inflation. Okay, so let's see something. This is my MD. This Remember all the time start from what star that's our this our equilibrium, this our money balance. Now, if this decreases, meaning there is what an expansionary monetary policy. If there is an expansionary monetary policy, meaning to increase money supply in the system shift to the right. So we are going to have M1 over P no, and bring the knots here. Now you see that my graph is not really, really drawn on scale. Sir, okay. Yes, dear. Please, your line was breaking at the beginning. So can you please, the beginning ah. of the graph. All right, okay. all right, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Let me clear my graph. In. Okay, so I was saying that the one that we solved, okay, I guess you can hear me now. 
It's proper now, right? Yes, it's okay now. Thank you. Now, I was saying that the one we were solving earlier, we, we knew that the policy rate was 25 to 26, okay? Now we are assuming it has been decreased to 24 rather instead of for 25. Okay, meaning government wants to, uh, this is what, expansionary. Okay, meaning government wants to increase money supply. So let's take this for instance. Okay, so we should have something like this. So we would have M, M over P, P. This is our MD money balance. This is our money balance one. Let me know, okay, one. So because this has decreased from 25 to 24, it's an expansion and we are expecting money supply to what increase. So if money supply is increasing, we would have something like this, MP, let's say one. Okay, if we trace this, you see that interest rate has what decreased to what two. And now this man has increased what? M star star. Okay, now let's go into the aggregate demand market. Okay, where we have C plus what? I. No, no one would want to put his money in an investment that will give him a lower returns. Okay, so if interest rate is decreasing, interest rate will, for, it will force us not to what? Save meaning our consumption is going to what, increase. Okay. Now, businesses, is it breaking? No, it's okay. Okay. So now it will force our consumption because we are not going to what, save. If, if we are not saving and you know what happens if you have so much money in your pocket and you're not saving, you spend it. Okay, so our consumption would increase. Now, businesses wouldn't want to save their monies in lower interest rate bearing assets. Okay, so now they would want what increase their investment. So investment will also increase. And if these two are increasing, we are expecting aggregate demand to increase. And you know, if demand increases, okay, if aggregate demand increases, we are expecting a shortage in the market. If there is a shortage, price will also what, shoot up. Do you get it? So that's how it works in the market. These are basically the dynamics, that's all. And if it is increasing, if the policy rate is increasing, this would be the opposite of what would have happened. Please, who don't understand up to this point? Okay, so Yasin is asking why is supply represented by M over P? Okay, thank you. And why will investments increase here? Okay, I don't understand that part. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so Yasin. Yes. Please, so this graph is causing inflation, right? Good. So at the end of the day, this graph will cause inflation in the market. You get it? Yes, please. Good. Now, Yasin, you asked why the supply curve is denoted M over P. And I remember I explained those terms to you. I don't know if you still remember. Okay. So let's, I, I think it's in your slides. I just wanted to show you what. Okay. So I, 
Okay, so basically the M over P is what? The nominal money to do some small quantitation for you to see something. Okay. All right. So. Oh, I saw this formula not long ago. Okay, okay, so it's here. Okay, so we are saying that the real money supply is defined by what? Um, nominal money supply divided by what? The price level, that's basically what I said. So yes, and if we want to solve your issue, what we are trying to say is that, okay, where is my... All right, so if government, remember this question, the one we just saw, government reduced what? Money supply. Okay, so when government reduced money supply, okay, initially we are saying M over what? P. If this is reduced, okay, whilst this is still the same, you will notice that, so let's say at first it was 500 all over price of, 10. Okay, so let's assume something of this sort happens. Okay, if government reduces this to let's say 400, remember the price is still the same, 10. So now this will give us 50, this would have given us 50 money balance and this would have given, this will now give us what? Money balance. That is why it is shifting this to the left. Okay. 50 is here, and now you are having Yasin, please do get it. It's Yasin with us. So, please, your line was breaking on. So, okay, so all right, someone is saying an increase is termed as contractionary. Yes. All right, so Esther, that's basically what you said, okay? So the reduction is the expansionary and the increase is the contractionary. Okay, so it's just what you just said there, okay? That's it. Okay, Yasin, you also asked why will investment increase okay so remember um uh, with the let's try and go through this okay so you see that when i send you the tutorial set or when you go through the tutorial set you see that you can do everything there it's not difficult okay so this is it this is the initial equilibrium where we have our r to be here there's a money balance one r1 okay now remember now because it has moved from 25 to 24, we are expecting money supply to what? Increase. All right. We are expecting money supply to increase. And now, if it is increasing, we will see interest rates what? Decrease. We said interest rates has a negative relationship with what? Money demand. Now, if this is, you notice that this is what increasing towards M2, E1, or let me say E2, E1. Okay, so Yasin, this is why um, investment is increasing. So we have C plus what I. Remember, interest rate is decreasing, so it will it will deter people from what um savings. Okay, this will deter people from saving. So it would increase our consumption. If you are not saving, okay? If you are not saving, it means you are consuming. All right. Then plus 
businesses would want, wouldn't want to what, invest in what? Um, interest bearing asset that gives lower returns. Okay, so now they would undertake their usual activities where they are, they will be building business fixed investment, residential investments, and inventories. Okay, so this will cost them the money that they would have saved to get a higher interest rate. They will now convert them into what investment. That is how this I is also increasing here. Whilst this two is increasing, we are expecting this demand to also increase. Aggregate demand to increase. And if aggregate demand increases, we know what will happen in the market, right? Demand is increasing. We are expecting prices to also what? Increase. Okay, we are expecting prices to increase because if demand increases, there will be a shortage. And this shortage will cause the price to what? increase. So that's the whole idea. Please, who, do, who don't understand to this point? So actually, like we are done. But we have a tax. We have some tutorials to be, we've been Sir. battling with for some time. Yes, Sir. please. Um, so please, um, basically, uh, there is always inflation in Ghana because uh, the bank sure. of Ghana uses a, a contrastionary monetary policy. Please, if I heard your question, I'm trying to repeat Maybe what you said. You said that all the time. Are you the one who has saved your name, Dot? Or is Johnson? He said, Is Johnson talking, please? I could see two mics operating. So, okay, Johnson. So, if I heard you very well, you are yes. saying that all the time there is an inflation in the economy, right? Yes, sir. And, um, And uh, is it uh, is this um, solely because um, the Bank of Ghana uses the contrastionary uh, monetary policy method? Oh, you know we have so many ways that government can reduce uh, money in the system. Okay. Yes. Sir. We have so many ways, and some are what we just said: the open market operation. Government can use the can do that to reduce money in the system. There is required reserve, then the discount rate. You get these are the three major key ways government can reduce money in the system. Or better still, it would increase the policy rate. You get it. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank yes, you. Sir. You're welcome. Any other question? So can we start with the tutorials? Yeah. All right, Martha, thank you. Thank you for giving me the permission to, to start. So if, if I'm not lying, um, I don't remember where we even got to. We solved this, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Did we solve this? No. All right. So let's try and do this chakra thing here. Okay. Let's try and do this chakra thing here. All right. So suppose that the Republic of economics produces three goods, books, magazine, and papers. The following table provides information about the prices and outputs for these three goods for the year 2013, 2014, and 2015. Okay, so we have the prices of the goods over there. I really don't want to go and come back, go and come back. So I'll be tempted to solve inside the boxes, okay? All right, so 
Now, these are the prices, okay? These are the prices for books, the quantities of books we, we, we produce. Prices for magazine, the quantities of magazine we got, then prices paper and the quantity of papers. So what is the first question? Okay, the first question is saying that using the provided information, fill in the following table. Now, before we even do that, what is nominal GDP? What is nominal GDP? Please, what is nominal GDP? All right. All right, thank you for that submission. I think I like the answer. Any other? Yes, and thank you. What is nominal GDP? Okay. Please, I'll try. It measures a country's gross domestic products using the current prices. Only the current prices? And quantity. And okay. quantity. Any other? You know, I'm trying to do all these things as a recap. Okay, so we said that the nominal GDP measures what the CD value of the economic activity. Okay, so looking at this, if I want to know, we were asked to calculate for 2013, 2014, 2015. Okay, so now let's go through this. It's very simple, it's not difficult. I'm going to write in the boxes here. Okay, I'm going to write in the boxes here. If you don't get anything, oh, let me let me let me set this caveat. Okay, if if you didn't attend this lecture and you are seeing stars, just calm down. Okay, don't ask questions because if you ask questions, you draw us back. But later, you can just hit me up. We'll talk about that. Okay, thank you. So let's take this. We have been asked to calculate the nominal GDP. And remember this one, we consider both the quantity and the exchange. I don't, I, I don't want to go up and come, go up and come. Okay, so if you have the questions, you can also open it. Okay, we said that this nominal GDP takes control of both the price and the quantity. So we can take the 2013. The 2013, what was the price of um, book? Please, are you here? Hello. Yes, sir. Okay, so what was the price for books? Or oh, you don't have the question. So what set is it? What's the number for the set? That's one. That's one, okay. Oh, someone is saying you guys don't have this. Yeah, so the one we sent started from two. So we don't have it. Oh. Yeah, the one you sent started from two. Mm -hmm. Oh, Kafra, Kafra. Mon Kafra, why? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm trying to get it and send it to you, okay? Okay, sir. But for us not to waste time, eh? let's do it up and down, up and down, whilst I'm searching for it, okay? Okay, sure. Yes. So, someone can just... 
screenshot this for me. This the this the thing I needed. You can screenshot this so that we will just do up and down, up and down. Okay, so let's let's go. Let's go. Because it's taking my time. Let's go, so make sure show. Hey, Rabbi, my bro. <laughs> Why can't this be? Why can't this be? Sorry. Okay, so you let go. I would I would assist from here. So later then you check it. I'll send it. Okay, so the the price is 100, 100, 110, but this will be the problem. So you let's go. Let's be here. So remember this one, we we consider both the price and the quantity. So if I come here. We are going to see that we want to know the nominal GDP for 2013, okay? Which is 100, remember it's price times quantity. 100 and the quantity was 10 for price, uh, for books, plus- Yes, sir. Yes. The price was 50 for, what is the next thing, Clara? Is it magazine? Magazine. 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 Yes. So the price was 50 for magazine, and 100 quantity we produce, right? Yes. Plus, the price was what? 110 or 10? 10. 10. 10. 10. Okay. It was 10 times what? 200. 200. Okay. So if you punch all this, this will give you what? The, so I'm, I'm stopping here. I don't have calculator. So someone should help me. Then I'm doing for 2014. You can also follow. 2014, the price was 100 for books, but rather we produce how many? 12, right? Yeah. Yes. And the price was what? 50. 52. 52. 52. Ah, you said the price is 52. Yes. Okay, yeah, 52 times. We produce what, 108. Mm. Plus, the price was 10. And we produce 205, right? Yeah. Okay, so if you punch this, that one will give us something. The price was 110 times 12, yes. Plus 2015, the price was now 54. 54. And we Times produce 105. Now the price here is what? 10. 10. And we produce two one hot. So these are basically how it is calculated. This is not difficult. It's really not difficult. So please, those with a calculator, this one, what did you get? 8,000. 8,000. 8, what did you get for this one, too? 8,450. 8,450. 8,450. Yes, sir. Is it my phone that is giving me wrong answer or yours? I'm having 8,866. Six, six. Do I Same have two. a partner? Yes, please. I had 8866. Yes, 8866. 
or let me open the chat room because someone is people are posting there. Yeah. So eight eight six six. Please confirm your, your, your calculation again. And the last one gives us what? Chat room for Midimochio. 9650. Okay. 9650. Okay. So you see, that is the nominal GDP for 2013, nominal for 2014, nominal for 2015. Now, the B question is saying, what is the percentage change in nominal GDP from 2013 to 2014? So we are looking for the percentage change between this and that. I remember the last time we did this. I don't know if you still remember, but the last time we did this. Okay, so if I want to find a change, okay, so answer. So percentage change is going to be what? The new. New minus old. All over. Oh, oh. I, believe, I believe this won't confuse you when you see this oh, oh please it's old i repeat old thank you so our new is what eight eight six six minus eight thousand all over eight thousand times hundred this will give us My internal calculators. Ten point ten point eight three. All right, ten point eight three percent. Remember. Because of this hundred, it makes this what percent. Okay, so that is it. You see how simple it is. Now we can do the same thing for what? They said from 2014 to 2015. So we are looking at this to this. Are we on the same platform? Yes. yes. Good. If that is the case, we know the new to be what? 9650. So percentage change. Equals nine six five zero minus what? Who can tell me this? Eight eight six six. Eight eight six six. Thank you. Now, this eight eight six six. If you don't understand anything, please don't hesitate to call me back. I'm here for you guys. So, what would this be? 8.9. 8. 9. 8. 9. 9. Can you give this to the small place for me? 8.8%. 8.8%. Thank you. You know why I'm asking for two decimal place? Because this was left in hot. You guys left it in two decimal. So I want consistency. Okay. Okay. Now we are moving to the next thing. The next thing is what? Real GDP. Real, real GDP. Real GDP. Guys, guys, you know the problem. If I try moving this sheet, you know, okay, let me let me try. Maybe it will work. I wanted to try something simple, but I don't know. The moment For I the begin, numbers, we have. You see, as I'm, you see, as I'm moving it, it's also moving with that. So I should clean the answers. Are yes. Yes. Okay. yes, please. Right. Now, this is also not difficult. It's just, but remember, with this one, what is real GDP? What is real GDP? Because the yes, in quantity. In quantity but so, real GDP is just for the actual fiscal volume of economic activities okay so we set gdp at what constant prices okay so we are going to freeze the price some of one of the price and use the other which one are we freezing
the 2014 Guys, 2015 2014 and 2015 you have to freeze just one so which one are you freezing <laughs> thank you very much we are we're going to freeze the price of what 2013, which is the base year. You remember, see, you see, using 2013 as well, the base year. So, so we are going to freeze the 2013 prices and use you get it. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, so let's try this. It's not difficult. Don't do that. Yes, and I can see your face. Don't do that. Smile, it's not difficult. Okay, so let's proceed. Now, we are freezing the real GDP, the 2013. So the 2013 would just be like the nominal GDP, the, how it's, the, the, the answer would have been, would be the same thing here. Okay, so this is 100 times 10 plus the same thing would happen, 50 times 10. Hey, is it 10? Hundred or fifty times hundred plus um two hundred two hundred so ten times two hundred two hundred yeah yes okay so this is to be eight hundred eight thousand sorry but this is where the problem starts remember we are freezing the price please do get it. So if that is the case, in exams, this is what I usually tell my people. In exams, if you think you will get confused, guys, this is 100, okay? Or oh, it's 10 or 100? 10. Hey, please see the The All right, so but the price is 100. All right, good. If you think in exams, you get confused, okay? All that you have to do is just do this for me in exams, okay? In exams, when you are doing the real, just do this for me. So you remember you are freezing the price. So for you not to get confused, just do this in exams. Okay, then add the new quantities to it. That's all. Is that difficult to do? No. Who is lost? Please, who is lost? Mm -hmm. Remember we said that the real GDP is GDP at constant prices. Okay. So we are going to freeze the price using the 2013 as the base price. Okay. So meaning whether the price changes in 2014, we don't care. All that we want to measure is what? The changes in the quantity. It measures the actual what? Fiscal volume in what? Economic activities. So we are not considering the price. We are not interested in the price. That is why we've frozen this price. We've frozen this and that. Please, do we get it? Yes, sir. So please, that's it. That's the whole idea. So all that we need is what? The changes in the quantity. So if I come here, remember now the quantity moved from 10 to what? 12. 24, good, 12. Now the quantity moved from 100 to what? 108. 108. Now the quantity moved from 200 to what? 205. So, Yasin is saying that this is 8650 in the chat room. Now, remember, this one now moves from 12 to what? It's still the same, right? And this moved from yes. 12 to uh, 108 to 115. Please, if you are lost, tell me. Okay. And this one moved from that to what? 212. Yasin is saying again. Yes. Yasin is saying 90. 70. I don't have hands in this. It's Yasin. <laughs> Whatever is happening here is not my handwriting. 
happened. So please, you can confirm, okay? When it's calculation, I don't trust some people. Confirm for me. Oh, this, this is correct. Is this oh, Charlie, yes, and I'm sorry. All right. You've done all. Thank you. Okay, so now, hey. yes, please. Please, with the question, when you check um, for books, the quantity rather is, I don't know if I'm the one. Huh? <laughs> the quantity rather is 10, 12, 12. And the prices rather are in 100, 100, 110. Or oh, it's a mistake. Yes. Here, we, we are saying that we freeze the price using 2013 as the base year. So this is not nominal GDP. Remember, the only difference between nominal GDP is the prices. Nominal GDP considers both the price and the quantity. But for real GDP, it only considers the quantity. Do you get it? Yes, please. Good. So that's why here is 100. If you like, let's try and use the real prices. You see that everything we get is the same as the nominal GDP, which we can't use for any measure. Do you get it? Esther, you are saying you are lost. I, were you in the first lecture? Esther, were you in the first lecture? Esther is not responding, so Esther is not here. Okay, so we freeze the prices in using the base here. So if I'm freezing this price, meaning the same price should run through for all the other years. That is why we, we froze this price, meaning it's not increasing, it's not decreasing. Okay, so the same thing is running through, you could see. Okay, so that's all, that's the only difference, okay. Okay, so Esther said she was around. So Esther, we said that nominal GDP considers both the changes in the price and the quantity. Biases. Okay, so it has not really considered the changes in the price. All that we are interested in is what? The changes in goods and services. Okay. So that is why we are frozen the price using the base year, 2013, the price was 100 year, okay? So we froze this price, meaning in the subsequent years, it shouldn't change. The price was 50 years, a 50 here, meaning in the subsequent years, it shouldn't change. And the price was 10, meaning the subsequent years, it shouldn't change, that's why. But we are interested in the quantities in the market, so, for that, we, we are okay. We are waiting for the changes. So we, we need the changes to make our analysis. So that's why we are saying that, we are saying that um, we should keep this. Yes, yeah, so all the prices are held constant. Okay, yeah. So now the next thing we are going to do, we've done this in nominal GDP, so it shouldn't be difficult here. They said we should find the percentage change in this. If I want to do that, you know the price already, so I'm not going to hurt my head. Okay, so I'm going to say 8650 minus 8000, all over 8000 times what? 100. I don't know what this will be. And the, new, the 2014 to 2015, yes, yes, yeah, I'm Marco count, but me can. Okay, so she said it's 1.3, 8.13. All right. Is it correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay. Now the next one is 9070 minus 8650. Okay. 8650. And yes, again, she's saying it is 4.86%. Okay. So we are done. We are done with.
So if you are you are also down with it, then you tell me, then I cleared it. Because really today, give me some small 15 minutes to like, so um, 1215 will close. Okay. Don't ask me again. We'll close at yes. 1215. If you ask me, we'll close at 1220. Oh, please, I'm that. just joking. Okay, you can ask. <laughs> All right, so I'm clearing everything here. So we are moving to the next question. You see, it's not difficult. In fact, this will be the same thing that will come in your exams. Okay, but I wonder how people will manage to get F. Even you did the same thing, people will still get F. I, I'm shocked. Okay, I'm really shocked. Okay, so let's see this. We are asking for GDP deflator. Now, what is the formula for GDP deflator? GDP nominal over GDP real time. GDP 100. real time hundred. GDP nominal over GDP real time. Fire like that. <laughs> yes, beast. We're on fire. Okay, so GDP nominal. So over nominal, GDP real. All over real. Real. Times 100. Oh. Times 100. Good. Please remember, yeah. I'm just cut cutting this nominal and the real. But it's it's nominal GDP as um Tracy said, and real GDP as Tracy said. Now, they said we should calculate that for what? 2013, 2014, 2015. Remember, you know your GDP, you know your nominal and your real now. Okay, so in exams, if you get the nominal and the real wrong, meaning the deflator will also be wrong. That's how people get zero. That's the truth. They will make mistake in the calculation and it affects everything. So for 2013, what was our nominal GDP? Right? All the time, this will give us 100%. All the time, the base year will give us 100%. Now, in 2014, what was our nominal GDP? 9650. 8866. Also, be a camera. You must show 8866 divided by what? 8650 times 100. Ah, as a yes, no, call over to you. Tracy, please, can you recharge it for me? It's one zero two point um five. All right. Percent, right? Yeah. Yeah. What is okay? There is a guy who has also speed up. Senior. So the next one, what happens? What is the nominal GDP for 2015? I guess is this, right? A, no. I think it was 90.70. Right? Something like this. Yes, no, no, I can't. Okay. Please confirm if it is correct. It is correct. All right. That's so correct. Is this also difficult? I don't think, right? Now, let's move to some small analysis. Okay. Can I clear this? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. So, you see... They are asking us, what was the percentage change in GDP deflator from 2013 to 2014 and 2015, 2014 to 2015? I believe we can do this or we should do it. Okay, let's do this. It doesn't hit. Okay, so what was the 2014, 2014 to 2015? Hey, 2013 to 2014, what was the percentage change in 2014? 
Two point something. Hey, Chama, are you sure? I remember it was one zero two, right? Mm -hmm. Minus hundred. What happens? What do we get? Two point five percent. Thirteen to twenty fourteen. Please, how do you get? Two point five. All right. Thank you. Percent. Now let's do twenty fourteen. Sorry. 2014 to 2015. Oh, why? What's wrong? And I remember that one we had 106.39 or let's say 106.4. This point two. minus what? 102.5. All over 102.5 times 100. Please, what would this be? 8.8. .8. All right, thank you. 3.81, yes, sir. percent. Okay, so, hey, today I've not heard from Yan Tichien. Now, they are asking us, identify the variable that does not change. Explain in words why your answer makes sense. Who can tell us? Who can help us? Okay, so you let's do this quick. Okay, now you can write this. Someone has typed something. Is it price? And the reason is that we will consider it's only price change. Okay. You said something. If this was exams, you would have gotten something for yourself. Yes, that's not bad. Okay, okay. So if you have your pen, you can just write what I'm saying. Okay. So they are saying that identify the variable that does not change. Explain in words why your answer makes sense. Okay. So you see where the question is. It's under what the GDP. Uh, the it's under the. GDP deflator. Okay, so what I what I, what we are trying to say here is that if the percentage change in GDP deflator, okay, you can write this so if the percentage change in the GDP deflator is zero, okay, so we are assuming if the percentage change in the GDP deflator is zero, then the price did not change, okay, for that particular period. If the percentage change in the GDP is zero, then we are assuming that the price did not change in that particular year. And also, if the percentage change in real GDP, okay, in real GDP is zero, then output did not change for that period. Remember real GDP. So if the percentage change in real GDP is zero, then output did not change for that particular period. Now, what I just deleted, okay, is the same thing. Remember we said that we can calculate inflation using three main um, tools. So we said that GDP deflator, uh -huh, the, the next two, Consumer price index and much. producer Consumer price index. Good. So you know how GDP is calculated. Let me give you the formula. It's very simple. There you know that um so inflation, inflation is equals to CP T plus one minus C all over CP T times hundred. 
all that we have done here is consumer price, the new consumer price minus the old consumer price all over the old consumer price times 100. And because we don't have consumer price in this question we just saw, it means we have to use the GDP deflator. And if I want to know the inflation, it's just what I just did, where we were doing the GDP new minus old, okay? Did you get it? Yes. So whatever answer we had for here, just bring the same answer here, and that's all. We are done. Is that difficult? No. Not, right? not. So now let's try and understand some basic concepts here. Okay. Hello. Hello. Um, please, with the age, I don't really get it. Kindly go right for me. Yeah, that was a percentage change in GDP deflator from 2013 to 14 and then 2014 to 15. I guess I couldn't get it. Yes. Okay. So this is what we are trying to do. We said that when we calculated the GDP deflator, okay, so 2013 to 2014, we had this. We had um, 2014, we had minus 100 all over 100. Remember, these things are in percentages times 100. And this gave 2.5. Right? If I remember the answer you guys gave. Yes, it was. Ah, ah. I think it. Ah, ah. <laughs> Did you get it? Yes, and please. Oh, we doing that. So we have one zero six point four three nine minus one zero two point five five times hundred. And I remember you said something, I've forgotten. So that's how we had it. That's all. It's just a percentage change. Oh, okay. Thank you. I've forgotten the answer we had. Okay. 3.81. Okay. So please, what did you... Okay, 3.81. So that's how we had it. Okay. Okay, so you've been asked to answer the following questions, which is pretty simple. Is, is, is there any question for me that I'm skipping? Okay, I don't think. Hello, sir. Yes, please. Uh, sir, please, can you go over the um, identify the variable that does not change? That's the okay. H. Yes, please. Uh, My name if is... I could remember. Okay, so I said that if the percentage change in the GDP deflator is zero, then the price, and if the percentage change in the real GDP is also zero, then it means the output did not change in that particular period. Is that fine? Yes, please. Thank you. You're welcome. So should I leave this one for you to go and do on your own? Because I think we've defined all of this. Let's go Tell through them. So I should stop or we should do it? Let's go through them. We should go through them. Okay, so what is macroeconomics? I defined this on the first day. So let's go over the practical 
Oh, okay, so I should stop this so that we move to another tutorial set. Yes. Yes, oh. because this one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but please, let me. Okay, thank you for that um, submission. But remember, explain this. How is inflation measured? Provide a formula. So that's the formula I provided, the CETA. What is price index in your slice? Mention three types of price indexes, GDP deflator, we have consumer price index and producer price index, these are the three. Now here, this inflation, inflation is increasing, but at a decreasing rate, then we say we have this inflation. I think everything here is in the slide, so I can stop here. Okay, so, so you said you still have capacity, so I should continue, or? Say. Or you are tired? Oh, I feel so say yes, let's you know. go one last one. All right, so let's try and do the shaka. Last one. <laughs> Someone is saying no, 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 no. Uh, if we no. enter a different topic, we'll get confused. Yeah. Oh, it's not been a different topic, okay? You know, I just wanted, just you, please, eh? it's just, I, I promise, this one, it's 12.23 on my time. 12.25, I'll leave the system top. Okay. Just look <laughs> at something. Tell me if you can solve it. That's so. That's all that I need now. So that I will know what to do. Do you get it? Yes. Okay. Just, you just look at this. Can you solve I, this? It's the same GDP we've been talking of, but this time they gave you gross domestic product investment. Um, they gave you government purchases. They gave you gross national product would you want to try this and send it to me? Then we have the nominal and the real GDP aspect also here. Yes, sir. Okay. Then they asked you for percentage changes. They asked for percentage changes, uh, they are to Sir, please, your line is breaking. We can't hear you. Inflation calculated by the GDP deflator different from the Plug that again. I was waiting for my people to. Oh, those those recording this one. I don't think we will solve it. So, all right. So.